What's going on everyone? Four-legged plague here again with another rant and reason episode. If you haven't already seen several of these videos, they're just videos basically where I rant and try to make some sense of things in this crazy, crazy world full of useless dog nuts. And today, <clears throat> freaking flies, get out of here. Today I just found myself cleaning a few guns and thought I would go ahead and use this time to get some crap off my chest that happened recently and I know it's been quite some time since I made a video and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity so um give me just one moment here So the the summer has been extremely busy. I've been working pretty much every weekend because my job just the management is terrible and they've got absolutely no idea how to run a business. They can't order things on time. Or, let me adjust this here a little bit. They can't order things on time, so I can't build them on time. And then we're standing around on a Saturday, legitly standing around because we have no work. But it doesn't matter because I have to be there because we're behind. Anyways, so the summer has been extremely busy. I'm just going to, th th this is... This is, again, you know, these videos are not as structured as some of my other videos. This is just, basically, if you want to sit and listen to me rant about all the BS that I've got going on, that's pretty much what this is. And, so anyways, uh, we've had several birthday parties for my nieces and nephews. And, oh, wrong one. My, oh, uh, as you know, obviously, I'm not a dog nut, but there are a lot of dog nuts in my families. On my side of the family, there's a ton of freaking dog nuts. And most of the people who have dogs in my family are like level three dog nuts. Where they'll get offended if you don't feel the same way about their worthless mutt as you do. Or as they do. Whatever. What in the world? What did I do wrong with this? Sorry, I'm trying to put this kit together to clean the barrel of this AR and I'm not sure... What I did wrong. Anyways. Most of the people... Okay, there we go. It's the right one. This little bristle brush has to go together. Most of the people in my family are level 3 dog nuts. Meaning, like, they're going to get offended if you try to tell them that you don't love dogs. And even the ones that are not, they don't hold dogs in the same view as, come on out of there. They don't view dogs in the same light as human life. It's still just annoying that they value the dogs enough where they're willing to inconvenience everyone in the frickin' room 
because they want their dog there. And their dog is doing things, sniffing people's butts, trying to get people's food. And like they see it and they're like, hey, stop it, stop it. Don't do that. All right, all right, stop it. And it's like, do you think that the dog, if it was capable of understanding English enough to the point where it would get that like you wanted it to stop, do you think that it would be licking its butt and eating its own crap? Like, use your use your brain, dude. Like, what in the world would make you think that, like, if you go, hey, stop, stop. Like, anyways. Um, but a specific occurrence that took place. We had, um... My grandparents had a breakfast at their at their house, and I was super excited to go because, you know, I know I'm not under the delusion that I have unlimited number of years left with my grandparents. You know, my grandpa and my grandma are both in pretty good health, but I just feel like if, you know, years from now, when they're gone, I don't want to think to myself, man, I sure wish I would have gone to that breakfast. I sure wish that I would have called my grandparents more. Like, you know, I've learned from the, the lessons and the mistakes of other people in my life to come to where I am now. And one of the biggest mistakes I think that people make is they don't, it doesn't sink in that they don't have unlimited time with family. And I think there are a lot of people out there who are extremely regretful that they had an opportunity to go to a breakfast or whatever, and they chose not to. And then later on, they just think to themselves, like, I would give all the money in my bank account to see my grandma one more time, to see my dad one more time, or, you know, so on and so forth. So, I was really looking forward to this breakfast. It was my wife and I, my grandparents, my aunt and uncle, um, two of my sisters and their husbands and their kids. Oh, I already did that. And then my aunt and uncle brought their dog. And it's almost like my uncle hates the dog. I think, and, and oh, of course, what, what kind of breed do you think it is? You know, it's a bully breed. It's a, I think it's an actual pit bull, not just like a, oh, it's not a pit bull, it's a blah, blah, blah. Like, I think it's actually a pit bull. And that makes me super uncomfortable because the stupid thing is constantly looking around, looking for food, and, like, it's constantly doing stuff that it's not supposed to be doing. Where in the world did my oil go? Uh, up here. It's constantly doing stuff that it's not supposed to be doing. And my uncle's constantly yelling at it. And I think someone at some point asked him, like, why do you take that thing to these family get-togethers if it's just going to have problems? And he said, well... Because it has such bad separation anxiety that when we leave, it just goes nuts and tears the place up. Like, okay, that should be indicator number one that the dumb thing doesn't belong in your house. So, it's always just, anytime we go to family get-togethers, this stupid thing is just in the way just in the way looking for food sniffing around and like my uncle like he'll yell at it and it'll quit doing what it's doing for a short time and but it's just like you just constantly 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 gotta watch the stupid thing and it's just so annoying to me to have to just be on edge all the time to just think to myself, I got to keep an eye on the dog and make sure that 
the dog doesn't get up to no good because if it if it does then I gotta pull my pistol and take care of some business before it kills somebody and you know you might think like oh that's that's overreacting well I mean maybe but like I would rather overreact at every single family get-together and just be uncomfortable than to just be relaxed and under the, under the delusion that there's no danger present. The entire idea that, well, even though this thing can just, you know, bust out and kill somebody, it, it's definitely not going to. There's no way it would do that. Well, you can't communicate with it with language. And so, it could be way... <laughs> In your mind, if it can think straight and do all these things, it might be just... It might be the opposite. It might be just a, a super, super smart dog, and it's just waiting for the right time to strike. <laughs> I don't think their their thought process is actually that detailed, but, I mean... Hey, if, if, if he's as smart as you say he is, um, so that was annoying. And the, the dogs, I'm not going to go into names for, with a dog just because if anybody in my family ever finds this out, they know who they are. And if you ever, like I said, if I, if, if you ever find, anybody in my family ever finds my channel, like, it shouldn't come as a shock to you that I feel this way. But, if it does, I hate your dog. I don't hate you, I hate your dog. I think you should get rid of your dog. That's just in case anybody ever finds my videos at is in my family. If you want to have a conversation with me about how much I despise your worthless mutant predator, I will gladly tell you about oops, about the gospel of anti-dog. So that, dang it, that was occurrence number one. And for the most part, for the most part, my uncle does a pretty decent job watching the stupid thing. Or it, it'll, you know, if it's annoying somebody, he's quick to, he's quick to take care of it. It's still not okay. And I still wish they wouldn't ask everybody in the room to take the risk, and you know, my wife is pregnant with, excuse me, with twins, and so you're asking me once again to take the risk that this thing, which is literally a tailor-made killing machine, it's, a, it's an animal that was genetically refined to be a killing machine, Okay, that looks pretty good. Just one sec. It's been genetically refined to be a killing machine. And clear. You're asking me to let it come into the room with my family, my legacy. You know, how dare you? You got a lot of gall to ask me, hey, I want you to take the risk for this thing. Anyways, moving beyond that. The second occurrence is at my brother-in-law's house. Now, I love my brother-in-law and I'm not about to make this all about bashing him or his family. Oh, what in the world? I'm not about 
to make this video just to bash him. But I'll say this right now. I think that the problem that I see that his family faces and he faces is a textbook example of a problem that a lot of Americans face and, you know, to a lesser extent, the rest of the world, Canada, blah, blah, blah. So we go over to their house and first off, you got to know they have two rescue dogs, two, and of course they're both pit bulls. Why wouldn't they be pit bulls? Because nobody wants to put up with the aggressive behavior of an animal that can just shred your freaking living room while you're gone. And this thing has, on several occasions, it has shredded their couch, it has shredded their bed, uh, it ate like a big, it had like a string something that it ate, and it had to have like $4,000 surgery to get the the string removed from its internal organs, which is just, you know, absolutely insane. I'm going to make another video on on animal lovers and how I despise the modern term animal lover. I'm going to go on that more on that later, but briefly here. The modern animal lover does not love animals. They love to control animals, but they're not generally willing to leave them alone or let them be. They got to feed them, they got to touch them, they got to they got to do all this stuff with them and it's like, dude, you're you're not part of this thing's familiarity and life experience. And it doesn't know like it, it just it's just out to get bottom line, it's just like dogs. It's just out to eat. It wants something to eat. It's instinct driven. It wants food and it doesn't it's not it's not capable of receiving or reciprocating your so-called love for it. So back to um back to my brother-in-law and their house. They got two rescue dogs. And several times they've talked about you know, if I've heard about it, then they've definitely talked about it because if it's, you know, something that they told, generally what happens is they'll tell my mother-in-law and then my mother-in-law will tell my wife and then my wife will tell me. So if it made it, if it, if it made its way all the way to me, it's pretty much a guarantee that it's true. They've talked about getting rid of that dog several times because like I said, it has ripped up their carpet and ripped up their couch and ripped up their bed and if they don't walk it like three times a day it'll become you know wild and crazy and that's just the one dog the other dog is a little bit less aggressive from what I understand but it it's just it's just like you know okay let me let me back up um <laughs> I keep getting off topic. The heck was that noise? Um, man, my brain is fried today. They have these two rescue dogs. I'm not gonna name them because I don't. Like I said, I don't want. This is not just a video about bashing my my in-laws. But they've got these two dogs. They're both just trouble. They're both just a handful to deal with. And every time we go over there, their kids are going wild, which I believe kids should be allowed to go wild. Their kids are going nuts making all this noise. And they've got the dogs in the cage, thankfully this time. And so... 
the dog starts barking and flipping out. They put a towel over its its cage so it can't see quite what's going on. And they the dog starts flipping out. Hey, you guys need to take that you guys need to go play somewhere else cuz the dog doesn't like it. Well, that pissed me off because it's not the dog's house. It's the kid's house. And when there's a birthday or get together, the kids should be able to have fun and yell and do all the things that kids are supposed to be able to do without having to worry about what some psycho carcass scavenging predator is going to think about it. So, you know, I had to work that day, or, um, no, I don't think I had to work that day. Um, but I'm nevertheless, you know, I'm sitting in the chair. I am, you know, just on my phone talking to people. And oh, that's new. I'm looking at the one, the one of the dogs. They have a male and a female. And one of the dogs starts like just bends right over, starts licking its vagina, smells it, and then drags it on the bottom of the crate, and then bends over and sniffs it and starts licking it. And I'm like, you know, that was absolutely disgusting. So, you know, it, it sucked having to watch that and see that, because that wasn't what I came there for. Um... But the the thing that made me the most mad was the one dog, the bigger one, the male, anytime the kids would come around, he would bark so loud, they had like a, a towel like draped over his crate like this, and every time he would bark, it would go poof, poof, it would, it would like, the concussive force from the bark would like puff up the towel, and they'd be like, hey, hey, stop it now. And then, like, my father-in-law and some other people would be like, hey, settle down, settle down. It's like, no, that's that's not going to work. A stupid thing is not going to, it's not receptive to, hey, hey, stop it. I don't like it when you do that. It doesn't understand. It just It's just so frustrating to watch these futile efforts to try and settle this vicious giant creature to settle it down and to to know that like it's it makes me the most mad like not that you you know you went off and you bought a pit bull and it's just you and the pit bull and then that way if if anything goes down like you're gonna be the only one that gets you know ripped to shreds there's like oh let me see um at least seven kids that are in the room playing and yelling, goofing around, doing what they're supposed to be doing. And then you got my wife, who is pregnant with twin boys. My entire legacy right there. Dang it. Did that wrong. These suckers can be hard to put back together sometimes. Okay. Kind of got to hold it like this. And get that centered. Right. I got it backwards. Center it right in there. And then up. This can be a pain in the butt to get back together sometimes. Hang on a second, I gotta focus. Did I do that wrong? I don't think I did that wrong. Well, we'll just set that one off to the side for now because I need to continue ranting. The thing that frustrates me, like I said, because they've got all these kids running around here. And if anything were 
to go down. Like, you can't ever fix the damage completely that, that is done when one of these large dogs attacks and brutalizes a child. <clears throat> you just can't. I can put the, you know, whatever type of surgery that they want, but it's never going to be the same. And it's going to be trauma. It's going to be traumatic for the child who has to endure this. And it's your fault for bringing this stupid thing around. That's it. Just it just infuriates me. But what I think that a lot of this comes down to. And this, this scenario is a, per, a perfect example of it. When anybody has a child or a family member or whatever that gets attacked by a dog and it was the family dog, a lot of times they, they'll say, we never thought this could happen. And when they say that, I think what they meant to say was they never thought it would happen. Now, they say we never thought this could happen, I think, because... Oh, did I do that wrong? Because it, it's, it gives the idea that they never understood the possibility was there, which would make them sound more innocent. If you never realized that it was possible for something to happen... There would be no way that you could see it coming. And so I think incorrectly, they, they say we never thought this could happen. What you really thought was you never thought this would happen. You didn't think the dog ever would attack. And that sounds a little less innocent. You never thought it would happen. You didn't acknowledge... You acknowledge the possibility that it could happen, but you never thought it would happen. And part of what makes me so frustrated, and I think the reason why a lot of this stuff happens, and you know, again, I could be wrong, but this is my opinion and this is what I think. Man, this barrel's dirty. Is that there is a lack of masculinity that is wreaking havoc on our homes and the, the you know, the, I'm mo mostly just focusing on the home right now, but there are lots and lots and lots of consequences that are taking place due to this lack of masculinity. And one of them, when you're talking about dogs, is the lack of a protective instinct. The idea that Putting your spouse and your children, oh, I needed that. Putting your spouse and your children ahead of anything else, of your own wants and desires, of uh, impulses and instincts, and Putting them first, being willing to die for them at that. The, the, the lack of protector instinct to say, I own this home, the safety of these people is my responsibility, and I cannot fail, and I will do whatever it takes to control my circumstances where I will create an environment that is the safest and the most like the, the, the most likely outcome will be that my children and my wife, or you know, whoever the protector of the home is, is safe. And in this instance, this is a textbook example of somebody who is out of touch with their basic instincts that they should be pro they should be born with and taught and raised that you protect your young 
that you protect your spouse and that that comes before anything else. If I was under the impression, I need something thicker. If I was under the impression that something bad could happen to my spouse or my kids, I would stop what I was doing and remedy the situation. If the smoke detector is out of batteries, I'm going to stop what I'm doing and replace the batteries. Because we know that every year, lots of people die in fires. Where, even though it's not a sure thing that the smoke detector is going to save your life, it's going to increase your chances. The fortitude and the willingness and the common freaking sense to put your family first before yourself, before your wants and your desires, and especially before a freaking dog. That lack of protector instinct, I see is, it, and you probably, once it's been brought to your attention, you'll definitely start seeing it. That lack of protector instinct is wreaking havoc because all of these kids that get mauled by the family dog, they didn't put themselves in that situation. They got no control over their own circumstance. And when the person who is supposed to be the protector of the home, in this case, the father, the husband, what have you, in this case, the father, to see that to see that they have not stepped up to their duties as protector of the home and as the man of the house that just that just drives me so insane and you might be sitting here thinking well you know who are you to tell other people how to live their life i'm not telling anybody how to live their life i'm just a guy on the internet if you want to put your children and those around you in danger, this one's going to be dirty. If you want to put them in danger, I, four-legged plague, I'm not going to come stop you. And I agree with your legal right to do with whatever you want with your own life. But just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should. Just because you're legally allowed to own a 200 pound pit bull and fill your home with these animals. Excuse me. It's been a while since I made a, a video. With these mutants just because you can, and, and this country allows you to do that. It's like Judge Judy said. This country allows you to do that, but you're not allowed to visit your stupidity on others. And it just drives me nuts when the, the person who's supposed to be the boss and the protector is neglecting their duties to do so. The entire concept of protector is just, well, everybody, anybody can be anything they want, and we encourage you to, to step outside of the, of what the, the racist, sexist uh, establishment has set for you, and it's like, 99.9% .9 of people are not being told what to do by, the, by somebody else from the standpoint of there's a system that implicates that you do something or uh, um, implies that you do something a certain way. If you want to go out and do whatever you want to do, there's, as long as you're not like you know going to go kill somebody, there's probably not a, a law that says you can't do it. I don't know. Maybe there is. But, like, I don't think that 
it should be it should be morally and socially acceptable all right let's try to get this one back together that it should be morally and socially acceptable for you to do this and bring a large predator like that into the home and while I was over there there were two of them come on oh well that's why it's not going back together okay All right. did you get it no If you're ever going to buy a Ruger SR-22, make sure that if you're going to take it apart and clean it, that you got plenty of time to do so, because it's a little tricky, to say the least. Okay. Come on. There. Oh, much better. Obviously, all the guns in, the, in this video are unloaded. I wouldn't be, and there's nobody behind this camera. It's just a, a mount that I rigged up with a with a travel holder, a phone travel holder, and a uh, a spring-loaded clamp. But anyways, I just wanted to get all that off my chest. It just absolutely drives me nuts when I see, you know, to speak against, I'm not here more, more to speak against other types of people. I'm talking about people like me who are in my role. My role is to protect and secure my family and to see people that are like, I'm going to earn some karma points by rescuing an anim a, a mutant animal that is going to tear the place up and hopefully not rip my kids up. To see that, it just absolutely floors me. And then to ask others to remain calm and be okay with that, even though the thing is barking so loud that, like, it shakes the whole entire room. It just really makes me want to rant and rave. So, yeah. I, I just don't understand the minds of dog nutters. Where they see... This thing, like, you can't tell me that they're not annoyed by this behavior. They see what's going on right in front of their face. But the, the unwillingness to, to act and to acknowledge the possible, the, acknowledge the, the danger that they're putting their kids through the unwillingness to do that i if that were me i just wouldn't be able to sleep at night i wouldn't be able to live with myself dogs are part of the reason that i carry concealed because a human i can speak to with language i can read their body language on their face and i can at least tell more than likely, if they're going to commit an aggressive act, I can tell by their body language or the things that they say to me. But with a dog, you could just be walking down the street and one of these pit bulls that is trained not to, not to give warning signs. You know, they're like, oh, you need to do the warning sign. It's like, no. Dogs are not as important as people. And it's about time that everybody in this country and, and anybody who is 
in the vicinity of dogs acknowledges the fact that they are dangerous and they shouldn't be treated like babies. They should be treated like animals. And if, if there's dogs that are uh, living on the farm and they're work animals, like that, that, I would consider that like a level one dog nut. And I could see like a possibility that that's okay. But like the, the whole entirety of the argument that dogs should be allowed in the home just goes right out the frickin' window. There should be no dogs in the home, period. All dogs in the home should be exterminated. And if you don't agree with me, I'll just give you a mountain. I can give you a mountain of evidence that says dog ownership is child endangerment, is self-endangerment. And that's not just like, that's not my opinion. It is a fact. When you bring a mutant, meat-eating, carcass-scavenging animal into your home, you're going to be exposed to danger. It's dangerous. And the perceived benefits are not worth the risk. Look at that bluing. Nice and rusty from all the years that I've used it. I got this gun when I was 12, fun fact. I mowed a whole bunch of lawns. And went to a gun show. Gave my dad or my grandpa the 150 bucks that I earned. I got a 22 rifle. This gun has been with me longer than any other gun that I've had. Just a good old dandy 22. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. I thought it would be useful to make wise use of my time and put out a video since I feel like I owe you guys. You keep subscribing to the channel and commenting and I appreciate all your viewership. I just figured I gotta clean some guns and might as well do something while I'm getting her done. So I hope you enjoyed that. I can't make any promises on when new videos are gonna come and I know you guys keep telling me like, oh, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. But like, my life's about to get even busier than it is now. <laughs> I'm gonna have two boys that I gotta worry about taking care of and that's gonna take priority over everything else because I'm their protector and I'm going to be their father, and that's going to take priority over everything else. So when I can sneak away and make a video like this for you guys, I will. I'm constantly thinking about new ideas and stuff to put up here. I'm, part, I'm still part of this movement, and I still care about the social climate and everything that goes down with dog ownership. I can't really tell if it's getting better or worse. I do feel like we have made a difference and spread some awareness with, you know, genetic disposition to be vicious and all that stuff. But we're vastly outnumbered, and I know the movement needs me and it needs you. So I'm not going anywhere. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. A little bit of a different video where I just clean and talk and do stuff like that and that might become what the future of this channel is for a while but i hope you enjoyed it and i'll uh, hopefully see you guys in the next video thank you for watching and always remember love the sinner hate the dog